And that is a video of um, our artist and our guest in the studio. He's a songwriter, producer, a businessman, and an international one at that. And today he's joining us in the studio to share his story and his journey with us. His name is Mike's Quest. It's a delight to hey, have you. Hey, how you doing? Good to Hello, meet Mike. you, ladies. Hi, how are you doing? You're right. I'm curious I'm about right. your name, Mike's, M Y X. Oh. Do you have time? Yes, I have you, time. Your producers will be calling you saying, <laughs> so come on, time, 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 time. Okay, okay. Just, just give so, us a okay. summary. <laughs> so Mike's is my name. Everyone's called me that for like years and years and years. Um, I've got lots of other names. I've got Alawiye, which is like my Niger connect. I've got Bwedi, I've got Kofi, I've got Michael. There's so many names. Um, but Mike's is what it ended up being. And Quest is also what it ended up being. That's the that's the that's the summary. That's the fifteen second summary. Okay, <laughs> one day we'll get to hear the full. Yeah, story. we can do like a whole three hour documentary <laughs> on what, what it means. Okay. <laughs> and you also mentioned Kofi. I know you have some sort of Ghana affiliation. Yeah, so so I'm Ghanaian. I I do this because uh, my mom's from Ghana. My dad was born in Ghana, but he his family originated from Abekuta. Um, see, I, I done my research. This is my first time in Nigeria. Oh, it's crazy. So? I, it's so Are you shameful. Kidding? Please say Abel but it's my, again. Dad, it's, it's my dad's fault. Please say Abel Kuta again. Abel Kuta, is that correct? Oh. Is that right? <laughs> they tried. Oh it's man, everyone's laughing no, it's at me fine. now. It's okay. Everyone's laughing it's at okay. me now. It's okay. We understand. We yeah. understand. So I'm... it's my first time, literally. Oh. Like I've been here for forty-eight hours, and it's been so amazing. So what? What are the shockers? that you've, you've experienced since it came to Nigeria? Oh, man, the shockers. Um, the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> no, because people were telling me, and I thought, yeah, you know, there's traffic everywhere. I mean, how bad can it be? And I've, I, I, like, one time I ordered an Uber, and it said, like, 0.4 miles. So I'm thinking, OK, 0.4 miles, nine minutes, eight minutes. But then it said 42 minutes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the guy, the, the driver was like, oh, yeah, that's normal. Like, that's, yeah, you're going half a mile, yeah, like half an hour. Welcome to Lagos. Welcome yeah. to Lagos. Oh. Unfortunately, this is the reality it in was, Lagos. We got stuck on that freeway. What's the one that goes to Lecky or something like that? Uh, Lecky okay. Expressway. Ooh. It's like a car park. Like, wow. I could have got out taking selfies. Yeah. You know, the cars were just there. Okay. Um, so that was, that was, that's an And experience. the heat, are you adjusting to the heat? No, but the heat is like, oh, no, it's the same, yeah, it's calm. Okay. I like, I don't like AC. I hate AC. Okay. Oh. Yeah, because I'm not coming from London from the cold to come and sit in cold. Why am I doing that? All right. Yeah. Now let's talk about your music. Okay. You know, welcome to Nigeria. We'll yeah, come thank back you. to that and I'll recommend some places you should check out before oh, you leave Nigeria. Oh, please do, yeah. But let's talk about your music okay. and, you know, the process that has led you to where you are today. Yeah, yeah. So let's tell us how it all started. So music, I've been doing music for um, quite a long time, like literally since I was like, like single figures. And um, I, like, I, I just loved music. And then eventually I started producing. Um, so that was the first like professional sort of inception into music. Started working with like major record companies and stuff like that. And then um, after that, I went into a bit of management. So I was managing artists and I was working with some record companies, working with some like, Names in the UK, people abroad, like they were, like worked with quite a few names, um, but then I was missing the creative side because I got so busy doing all of the sort of industry stuff mm -hmm. that I wasn't doing a lot more creative stuff. So I made a decision to just kind of cut all of that stuff out and just came back to creative. So I've recently been doing a lot more production, and then I went back to uni um, about three years ago to go and study orchestration and composing. Because I've always liked classical music as well, um, and just like stuff to do with violins and cellos and stuff. Um, and I wanted to make sure that when I came back properly as a record producer, that my lane was like very clear. So um, I've been working on a project which fuses sort of like Afro sound and stuff with like orchestration, like strings and stuff, to give it like a very cinematic kind of sound. Um, that's due out like from like next month onwards, you'll start hearing some stuff. So I'm really excited. Is about that an it. album? Yeah, so there's an EP initially. Okay. Um, but then even when I'm producing records now, I naturally just end up doing that kind of fusion anyway. Um, and performance wise as well, when I perform now, um, so I might be on the keyboard, but now I might have like a string quartet or, you know, if I can afford an orchestra, if someone's paying big money, we can <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, so basically, what was the transition like for someone who was managing artists yeah. and doing well at it? Yeah. And you were, you know, gaining success for other yeah. people and yourself too. Yeah. What was it like when you woke up one day and said, you know what, 
I want to use my talent and I want to produce. I want to do music yeah. for me, my style, yeah. and infuse everything that I know that I can infuse yeah. in it and make it beautiful as it is now. Well, I mean, that's an interesting question because before I got into management, I was producing already. So, like, I, I got signed and had some, like, major, um, what we call cuts, where I, like, produce records for people and get them released and stuff. Before I started managing, then an artist that I was producing didn't have a manager. So I ended up sort of like working with her, going to the meetings, and then before I realized, it's like, okay, I'm the manager. And, you know, she had like some number ones across the world and stuff, and she was doing really well. So we got really busy touring and stuff like that. Um, but then to answer your question, when I wanted to really, it was, it was a deliberate decision I had to make. And um, I had to sort of like accept that I was sort of going back to start again, because things move so quickly in entertainment and music. Um, so, like, social media was happening and this was happening as new artists that obviously, yeah, I can name drop this and that person, but at the end of the day, there's fresh artists on the scene who are doing their thing. So, it was a humbling experience, but in a good way, it was exciting because it made me have to research new artists and check out new territories and stuff. So, it's, it's all been quite experimental and quite great. That's a new trend. I don't know if, you, if it's a new trend. I'm sure you'd be able to tell me better where we're seeing a lot of producers. Usually, when we think of producers, we're thinking yeah. of them just making the beats and they yeah. give to, giving to the artists. Yeah. But now they're becoming artists. So they're yeah. producing their own songs. Artists and job are jumping exactly. on it. Yeah. And not just producers. We're seeing that with DJs as well. DJs yeah. are coming Absolutely. and they're featuring artists. And it seems that that bug has beat you as well. Well, so, yeah. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> like, the reason why I did it was because... Originally, when I was doing lots of tracks with them, and that's a very good question, like, because of the fusion of different, like, genres and sounds that I have, it would, my stuff would always stand out. So, f say, for example, you're an artist and you come to me, hey, let's do two tracks with Mike's Quest, we'll do tracks with this person, that person. M the Mike's Quest tracks would always stand out because my sound was a bit weird and it wasn't, like, a generic kind of sound. Um, so it stood out anyway. So it's just like, for example, like Pharrell or the Neptunes or Tim, when they first started working, their stuff stood out. So it was inevitable that they would have to brand themselves, not just because they wanted to be famous, but because their music in itself stood out so much that it made sense for an artist's project, because otherwise their artist fans would be like, they'll listen to an album and then this track sticks out and it's like, oh, well, that doesn't fit in. But if you say, oh, that particular track I'm featuring on Mike's Quest, then it's like, okay, cool, cool. I like that album, and there's that Mike's Quest track. Okay. You have, I mean? have you worked with any known Nigerian acts? So Nigerian, no. Like, I, like I've been working with a few people. Shout out to June Ubi. And, um, like, there's a guy called Oz who I've started working yeah. with. Um, <coughs> but it's like, like I said, it's my first time here. And I'm really, like, I love, I love the sound out here. And the this is a place so to be. Dope. To be honest, like, like if you want to pursue... A career in music yeah. in Nigeria, like yeah. coming in home, Afro stuff. In Afro, yeah. yeah, coming home to Nigeria was a fantastic. A hundred percent. And I'm, I'm wishing you all the best with no, that. I've been soaking in the music, and there's so I've got a whole list of people I'm trying to track down to get in the studio. Brilliant. Really. You mentioned the projects where you're working on already. You know, the yeah. classical and Afro fusion. Yeah. And it'll be out by June. Yeah, exactly. It's going right. like, singles will be so out. So we're June. holding you to your word. We Please look forward do. to seeing Check it that out. amazing it's body be of dope. work. Yep. How can we follow you up to keep up to date with all that you're doing? So you guys can catch me. So it's Mike's Quest, M-Y-X-Q-U-E-S-T, on all the socials, Instagram, Twitter, mm. Facebook, or even just mikesquest.com. Everything should be up there. All right. Thank it's a yeah. delight to have you. Great Thank to you for joining you, us. Ladies. Thank and you before so much. you leave, make yeah. sure you eat Amala. Do you like Amala? Amala. I haven't have tasted you haven't tasted Amala? No. All right. That's, that can be a national sin. But Amala. at least tell me that Jello you have Jello fries. Oh, so that one course. is standard. But we don't want to have that discussion. No, no, no. We don't have Jello fries. I'm telling you Amala. 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 Make okay. sure you tell them you want Amala with the three in one mix. It will do big, big mm. and the rest of them. <laughs> Amala three in one mix. The soup. They have the, the soup. three in one the, mix. There's, there's a mix. Very <laughs> okay. standard mix. We have been discussing with Mike Squares, <laughs> who's an international record producer, artist, songwriter, and a businessman. And he's here in Nigeria for the very first time. We've been able to follow him on his journey. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.